Hey crafty people! Welcome back to my channel and in case you're new here, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. I do paper crafting, card making, junk journaling, and mixed media art. Let's get crafting! So today we're working on a couple techniques. We're going to be doing some faux rust and some faux leather. Now I know I've done the faux rust in videos before but they've all been part of bigger projects so i wanted to do a standalone video on faux rust um, and i also want to do some faux leather which i have not really tried before so we're going to see how that goes um, and i also wanted to show you some alternatives because i know i generally use the deco art media fluid acrylic paints when i do my faux rust but i wanted to show you that if you don't have those some alternatives that you can use to create your faux rust look. Now, I, and I also wanted to do it because in the past I've done it on like the smaller gears. So this time I decided let's use some of my bigger gear dies and uh, my clock. And so these are Tim Holtz Sizzix uh, alterations. They're like the big chunky dies and I've got gadget gears and weathered clock. I'm not sure if these guys are still available, um, but whatever gear shaped die or, or pretty much you could do it on anything. I actually have some key shaped dies. I should have die cut some of those out. Um, so whatever you want, I just wanted to create some, um, rusty looking bits and bobs because, um, I'm working on a steampunk journal and I thought those would be great for steampunk. So, You've got two alternatives for your starting point. You can either die cut it out of white or pretty much any color cardstock, or you can start with some black cardstock. And my piece, I didn't have a scrap piece big enough, so I've got a half gear, which could be cool on the side of a piece. So I've cut some out of the black and I've cut some out of white so I can show you options for if you're using, if you don't have black cardstock or don't want to cut it out of black cardstock. Um, you can also do it out of watercolor paper if you're uh, worried about how well it's going to hold up. But it sh these should be fine. We're not going to be putting a ton of paint and stuff on it. Um, so this is just regular old car cardstock scraps from my collection O oh, scraps. So let's start with the black ones since those are the simplest ones for step one of this process. And step one is I'm just going to apply natural sand to a couple of the gears. I'm also, in case you don't have natural sand, um, it is a translucent product that has basically grit in it. So I've also pulled out some translucent distress texture paste because you could use that. You could also take, if you're working on black, any kind of translucent medium and add sand to it. I also meant to grab, if you've got a uh, grip paste crypt, you could use that as well. Um, I'm not sure how well the texture, how, how gritty the distressed texture paste is. Let's take a look. I can get the jar up. So this, I don't know how well, like this is not doesn't so I'm very articulate this morning if you take a look at the sand I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera let's see if we can there's texture in it let me pull out a palette knife and see if that will help show it off a little bit better the liquid text natural sand has like grains of texture in it which you can kind of see the Tim Holtz texture paste is really more like a gel medium, like a, yeah, a heavy gel medium. So it's not going to give me the texture I want as it is. But if you have that and you have sand, you can just add some sand to it. And that will get the same effect as the Liquitex natural sand. So now the grit paste is gritty as well. So the Grit Paste Crypt should work really well also for this. So on some of these, I'm gonna use the natural sand and on some I'll use my Distress Grit Paste Crypt. 
Um, but like I said, if all you've got is like a translucent texture paste or some like Liquitex matte gel, or if you just have like white gesso, you can add sand to that. And what it'll do is give it a gritty sandy texture, which is what we want to create our rust. Um, and I find for these types of things, it's easier to just use a paintbrush to apply it. So I'm gonna grab one. Um, you just bear in mind, if you use a paintbrush, you're gonna wanna be sure you clean it off really well after you're done using it or you're gonna gunk up and ruin your paintbrush. So I'm just gonna apply a layer of the sand and it doesn't have to be too thick and there'll be some spots where I'm going to apply it a little thicker because that'll give us some more interesting texture. Um, you know, things don't rust evenly. So, and one thing to bear in mind with the natural sand is the thicker you apply it, the more likely you're going to get it. It's going to end up being a little less translucent. Um, you know, it's not going to go fully opaque, but where you have like a lot of the sand built up, it's obviously going to be the like white sand color instead of fully translucent. So just going to go over the whole piece like so. And mostly I'm just doing this to give the piece some texture, um, which will help with the whole making it look rusty during our next steps. So I'm gonna set that guy aside and let him dry, figure out. And then we'll do this half one. So how is everyone doing? Today, I am tired. Um, I usually have an annual holiday party, but uh, schedules did not work out for having it in December this year. So I decided to have it the first Saturday in January. So that was yesterday. And I'm Italian, which if you don't know what that means, that means I have to overfeed people. I have to have way too much food food at my gatherings because if not my Italian grandmother would rise from the grave and smack me upside the head. Um, so I spent a, a two days doing food prep pretty much. I took Friday off from work so that I could do food prep um, and shopping and then I spent a good chunk of Saturday food prepping till party time. Um, so I'm tired from all of that work and then having people over and the dogs of course were went insane like my one dog is actually fairly good like once once he greets the people after they come in he kind of settles down and is like okay I will just lay on the couch next to you and you can pet me and love me and it'll be great whereas the other one's like I must jump on your head and let you know I love you all right I'm gonna switch to the crypt paste for these two guys and I'm fine with just using the same brush and this is a little bit thicker so I'm gonna probably apply it in an even thinner coat either that or it's getting gunky already um, So yeah, I, I spent a good chunk of the last two days running around and I still have to do a little bit of cleanup in my kitchen post party, but I also needed to get this video filmed. So when given the choice between doing dishes and filming a video, guess what I picked? Alright, so I'm going to set that one aside and then do this one. The crit paste is definitely not as, does not spread as nicely as the Liquitex was going on.
So are you fully recovered from the holiday craziness? Um, yeah, I haven't even started on decorating yet, but I don't usually do that until uh, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend um, because I need a three-day weekend when I'm decorating because I have so much stuff to take down and I need at least one day of rest before going back to work. So I will, I will probably start um, in the evenings this coming week just because I've got uh, plans on Saturday night and I gotta have some time next weekend to film videos for YouTube. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's, it's a big job on decorating my house because well, four Christmas trees, 45 Christmas wreaths and a bunch of decor. So yeah, it's a big job. All right. So again, as, as you can see, I'm not being too delicate, too neat about this. I just want to get it on the piece. I'm going to set the paintbrush aside for a sec and wipe off my hands. And yes, this is definitely going to be a messy project day. Um, just so you're aware, we are getting our hands dirty for sure. All right, now for the ones that started out white, you've got a couple options here. You can just straight up paint them black and then add the sand, or you can take some sand and your black paint, or in this case, I grabbed gesso because my black paint is not as easily accessible as my black gesso. Take a palette and mix the two together, which will then save you from having to do a coat of black and then a coat of sand. So that's what I generally do if I'm starting from white and I remember, um, is I'll mix up my black and my natural sand. And I'm mixing up probably more than I need for those two pieces because I've got a bunch of gears. I'm going to go ahead and um, work on as I'm doing these off camera at the same time, just because I've got stuff out. I'm making a mess. I might as well ink up these guys. And again, if you don't have the natural sand and you have black gesso, you could just add actual sand <laughs> to the black gesso and go from there. And I'm just gonna take my same paintbrush and do a coat. Now, with these, I'm just going to make sure I go around and get my edges. And again, same process. I'll put it on a little thicker in a few spots to give us some... So that we have like spots where we have an extra buildup of rusty grunginess. And so I am just going to go ahead and finish coating all of my white pieces like this. I mean, it's pretty much just get a coating of black grittiness on everything. Um, and then I'm gonna let everything dry naturally, just let it air dry. Um, the gels and pastes and stuff don't love getting heat set, you know, tends to cause bubbling, um, which can be a cool effect if that's what you want to go for, but not necessarily what I want here. So I am gonna finish painting the rest of the guys um, and then I'll be back. Our gears are also all dry, so I have got all of these guys. So let's go through and I'll show you 
all the various bits that we did. So these were the black cardstock that I just added the natural sand to. Um, and let's see, can you see the texture on there? So yeah, there's, there's nice texture on these pieces. So we've got those two. I did two with the grip paste and there's a little bit of a gray tint to it, but there you go, that's got nice texture on it. And then these are the pieces I did that were cut out of white cardstock. So a little less textury. I probably should have put more of the natural sand in with the gesso, um, but these will still work for our project. And I did go ahead and do all of my other gears that I had already die cut out at some point for some reason. and. I like went to town die cutting this shape out. I had like a gazillion and six of those. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead while I've got all the paints out and paint all of these guys up as well, but I'll do those off screen. All right, let's move these out of the way since I need a palette for my paints. I'm going to show you a couple different options for painting these guys up, uh, depending on what paints you might have. So. My go-to are, as I said at the beginning, the Deco Art Fluid Acrylic paints, and I've grabbed Cobalt, Turquoise Hue, uh, English Red Oxide, Quinacrinone Gold, and then I've also grabbed the Cobalt Teal Hue, and I like to add a little green, so yeah, I grabbed the Yellow Green Light, and I thought I grabbed a darker brown, but I apparently did not. Um, I may need to grab one. We'll see how it goes. Um, and this is kind of a just play around what you're gonna do is you're gonna want to dry brush your paints on because you don't want to put a ton of paint on and that's what I like with the fluid acrylics they're um, a translucent or semi translucent paint let's see does it say that ah, semi transparent yes it specifies it's semi transparent so it just gives you a light coating, like you're not gonna fully cover up the black. And so I'm just gonna go around and add a very small amount of paint. And right now I started with the turquoise, the cobalt turquoise hue. And I'm just brushing a little bit on in various spots start adding color to our gear to get us our rusty look. Now I'm gonna grab some of the green. And again, I'm not even bothering. Oh, I'll clean the brush off a little bit. I'm just wiping it off on a piece of paper to the side because I don't want to wet my paintbrush because really hard to dry brush with a wet paintbrush. So again, I'm just adding a little bit here and there just to get some interesting color in. Because you'll notice if you look at images of rust, there's all kinds of colors mixed in on a really rusty piece. Um, and I'm gonna toss in just a smidge of the cobalt teal hue. I'm using a paper towel off to the side to kind of wipe off some of the paint and this will get me a few brighter spots. But as you can see, like I'm not putting a ton of like bright blues and greens on here, just a little bit to add some interest. And then we're going to go into our, uh, this is the quinacrinone gold that I grabbed. And I'm just gonna add that on over a, most of the piece. And if it gets on a little too thick, I'll just brush it out a little bit.
course the dry paper towel I've been wiping the brush off on is the damp paper towel I used to wrap up my brush uh, when I was doing the uh, doing some matte medium on something and didn't want the brush to dry out so that's why it's getting a little frothy if you've noticed that so yeah you'll notice I'm going back over some of the green and blue spots with the quinacridone gold to kind of knock them back and I am going to bring in a little of the English red oxide And so yeah, this is kind of a just just play around until you like the look of the finish on your piece. Oop, that got a little too much on there. Grab a big towel. I'm just gonna tap some of that off. Um, finger to kind of smush it in and I'm just taking a look at it trying to decide am I happy with the colors I've got do I want to add a little bit more I think I want to add a little bit more of the green in a few spots like over top And so there's our faux rusty gear. And that's using the fluid acrylics. And, and that green is showing up a lot brighter on the screen than it is in real life. It's not quite that like intensely green. Um, so that's, that's the first version. And that's using the fluid acrylics. Now let's say you don't have fluid acrylic paints, but you do have regular acrylics. You can do the same thing with regular acrylics. So let's take that guy and I've pulled out, I've got folk art teal. Maybe I have folk art teal. Let's Let's try this again. This this may be dead. This paint may be dead. Um, oh, no, it's just very, very thick. All right. We're going to try that again. I'm going to put a little on my palette. The teal. And then I've got Deco Art Peacock Teal, which is a little bit brighter. And then I grabbed Brick Red and a little bit of Dark Chocolate, which apparently I haven't even opened. Now, with acrylic paints, you can thin them out a little bit if, like, that one teal is really, really gloopy. Um, with just a little bit of water, you don't want to add too much water. Let's see if we can get any of this brown out. Okay, there we go. Um, so you can add a little water to thin it out, but then you just gotta be careful. You wanna make sure your brush isn't too wet when you go to add it on. See, so you can do the same thing with acrylic paints. Um, so I'm just, again, Adding a little bit of the blue color in. Whoop. That's a little heavy, but that's okay. We're going to add more colors on top. Whoop. Not drop it in the paint. So again, it's just randomly applying a bit of paint to the piece to get us kind of a rusty effect. 
come in with the red. So yeah, this the red that I grabbed is similar to the Deco Arts. Um, kind of a cross between the quinacridone gold and the uh, red oxide. So I'm just gonna go around, go over the blue to knock it back a little bit. And let's add a little bit of the brown in. Kind of figured I just might need the brown to either mix in with the red, depending on what color it came out, or to knock back the blues. And I'm just using my finger to kind of smush it around a little bit. So yeah, it. There's definitely a difference between the two. This has got a little bit more, and and it may also be a little bit that this, I used the natural sand on the black cardstock, so it has a little glossiness to it, where this is a little bit more matte because I use the mix of the natural sand and the gesso. Um, add a little bit more. But also the semi-translucent paint usually has a little bit of a sheen to it Whereas the acrylic paints are going to be more matte. So that's what it looks like using acrylic paints. But you can get a similar effect with the acrylic paints if you don't have the gloss medium. I personally like the effect using the, not the gloss medium, the fluid acrylics. I personally like the fluid acrylics best for this. Um, but if you don't have them, you can still get a similar effect and you could always go back in and add a uh, gloss medium over top if you wanted to get more of the shine like this guy's got or just leave it matte. Completely up to you. And then finally, you can also use distress paints. And so I pulled out some distress paints. Now I don't have a ton of distress paints, but I do have salvage patina. I figured let's try some crushed olive. So I'm just putting out a little bit of paint. Cause again, you're not using a ton of paint for these. And then I've got aged mahogany, which is not open. Let's get that open. And it also has one of these on, which is why it's not coming out. All right, let's see how these do. Let's do a comparison with the regular, the acrylic paints and see if we notice a big difference between using the two. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to everybody. Just makes it a little more fluid. Add a little bit of green in here. Off the brush a little. about the aged mahogany. I think I'm gonna have to pull in a brown to knock it back a bit because it is definitely a little bit more intense than I want for my like primary rust color. And I would have pulled out Rusty Hinge, but I don't have Rusty Hinge in the Distress Paints. So, so I thought about that. And I went looking for it. I was like, oh, I apparently don't have it. Yeah, 
Yeah, because that's looking very pink. Got some very pink rust this time. Um, let me go grab a brown to mix in here. Let's grab a little vintage photo and see how that does. Let's add a little bit of the aged mahogany to it. So that we can get more of a reddish brown. That's still looking very pink. Okay, I think I'm gonna grab some walnut stain because I wanna get that a little darker. I'm not loving the distress paints and I think it might be a little bit of the color that I have are not the best colors for this but yeah I definitely of the three so far definitely like that one the best um and let me do the fluid acrylics on a matte finished one so we can see how it looks against those so we'll grab uh, this guy. And again, I'm just, it's really just randomly applying a little bit of paint, occasionally smushing it around with my finger to get it a little more smudgied. Add a little of the green, like that was way too much green, but that's okay, because we'll knock it back in a sec with the other colors. And I've moved on to the quinacridone gold and that I tend to do that over most of the piece because that's, you know, that rusty orange color and then blend it in with the blues and greens that I've added. I'm gonna grab a little of the red oxide hue as well. And just kind of mix everybody on. Again, this is a until you are happy with what you got. Now, sometimes I will also add a metallic in in very small amounts. Um, so that it looks like some of the original metallic colors still on there. So you can do that as well. All right, so let's, let's take a look at our three matte finished ones so that you can get a full comparison of those guys so that's the fluid acrylics and the green is showing up way brighter on a uh, camera than it is in real life um but there's that this was the distress inks and that is actually looking a lot brighter than in real life let's let's adjust the lighting a little bit see if it so yeah they're definitely coming out showing up a lot brighter in on the screen than they are in real life and then that's the acrylic paints so yeah I definitely think these are not the best colors that I had for the distress inks um or the distress paints for doing this but by and large I like the fluid acrylics best because I like the trans the semi-translucent nature of them now, another thing you can do with acrylic paints is you can add glazing medium to them, which will make them um, a little bit more transparent. Um, 
So that's what it does is it, it increases flow and leveling, but it'll also like adds transparency to an acrylic paint. So that would probably work better than adding water. But I wanted to show you how it would work if you added water because not everybody has that and I've wanted this to be a here's here's how you can do this project if you don't have um all of the fancy things that um I may have because I've been collecting craft supplies for a gajillion years now so let's just do one of the grip paste ones and see how that turns out and then I'll just do the rest of them off camera and come back and show you what everybody looks like all finished. But yeah, I definitely, I like my fluid acrylics. There's a reason why I have a whole bunch of fluid acrylics. I like the, the semi-transparent nature of them. I like the effect I get on things with them. Um, I think it works really great for creating the rusty look on these gears. I also think I like the natural sand better than the grit paste. Um, although the grit paste isn't bad. It's just the base color is a little bit different. Like it's not a solid black. It's kind of got the color of the grit paste in the thicker spots. Whereas the natural sand um, might get a little white, but it's a little more translucent than the grit paste crypt like there's less color to it so there's what they look like you know so these were all done with the black cardstock see and so although I do kind of like it like the more I look at it the more I'm like you know that is kind of a grungier feel so there's those options I'm gonna go ahead and finish painting everybody up um, and I'll show you what everything looks like once I'm all finished. Okay so for our faux leather I want to try a couple different techniques and one is going to involve using this Tim Holtz Sizzix dye which I believe is called leather um, or something like that. I have to double check because what I want to do with this guy is I've got some Scrap pieces of cardstock, which will probably have to be cut down to fit to the right size for, yes. I'm gonna need to cut those down. So let me grab my paper trimmer and the embossing folder is a little over four and a quarter by about six. So let's cut this one down to six. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the embossing folder and I am gonna ink this side of the folder with, we're gonna go with Archival Ink in Vintage Photo. And actually, let's hold on a sec. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piece of paper and spritz it with water because this is, and I'm just doing it on the one side because I'm putting the ink on the other side. Um, and so we're gonna ink this up. And I'm gonna run it through my embossing folder and I'll be right back. All right, so that's uh, how it came out. It did not ink. I, I need to do a little bit better job inking the folder. Um, but that's gonna get us a little bit of a leather look and we're gonna do some more stuff to this in a minute.
I'm going to go ahead and run the rest of these guys through and then we're going to play around with them a little bit to um, enhance the leathery feel of them. So I'll be right back. All right, so I did these two with the Vintage Photo Archival Ink. And for these two, I ended up pulling out my uh, Grand Espresso and doing it. Um, but now, you know, they've got a bit of a leathery look, but they don't have, like, that soft pliableness of leather. So what I'm going to do is grab some hand lotion, and I'm going to work it into these pieces to... Kind of condition the paper and soften it up and I'm gonna crinkle up my paper as I'm doing this um, and hopefully not lose all of the texture I got from embossing so this is a complete and utter experiment and now I'm going to set this guy aside and let that dry and I'm going to do it to my other pieces of paper as well. So um, I know Gail Agostinelli has done this and um, refers to it as Mamagami. Um, some of the other faux leather videos I've seen, they've done it using a uh, hair conditioner. So you could do that if you don't have any uh, hand lotion handy. Um, I just wanted to see how it worked out combining it with cardstock and embossing folders. So it may be that I should have done this first and then done the embossing folder and I might try doing that to this piece. I may add hand lotion to it, let that dry and then see, and then emboss it and see what happens. So we're just experimenting and having a bit of a play with this um, technique. And this is the one that hasn't been embossed at all. We'll see how that turns out if we lotion first and then ink and emboss. So. Now, this is something I'm gonna have to leave for a little while to dry before we can do anything else with them. Um, so I'm just gonna set all of my Lotion D papers aside. And then I'm gonna show you the other technique I wanted to try for um, faux leather. And this is the one I've seen in a bunch of videos out there. So definitely not like my original invention. Um, and you can do this with, I'm gonna use packing paper, but you can use it, use a brown paper bag if that's what you have. Um, and we're gonna be doing a lot of folding and crumpling and crinkling and all that good stuff. So if, if that's gonna bother you, turn off the volume now. And most of the videos I've seen doing it, this they measure out and do nice, neat pieces because they're planning on making a junk journal cover out of it. I'm going to be using this for die cutting, so I don't care that it's not perfect. The, the size does not matter. And so you're going to crumple up your paper because we want the wrinkles. We want all the wrinkles. And actually, I'm gonna probably slip this with a little water, which is gonna make it a little more pliable and less likely to rip like I got a rip in there. Um, so this is kind of play around with it, wrinkle it up, unwrinkle it, decide if you want more wrinkles, less wrinkles. This is totally up to you at this point. set that one aside and work on this one too and again I'm gonna spritz it lightly with some water which just kind of
kind of makes the fibers a little bit more pliable. Now, if you're doing this with a um, brown paper bag, like a grocery bag, you may want to add the conditioner or um, the hand lotion to it to get it more pliable because this I think is going to be fine without it, but a heavier material might be harder to work with in that it won't crinkle up quite as easily. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add ink on top of this. Now you can use whatever inks you have and wanna use. I'm gonna use Distress Inks because that's what I've got. Something to bear in mind if you're using Distress Inks is that they are water reactive, so if you add water to this after you add your inks, the ink will move around. There it is, I was looking for, I'm gonna use some Distress Ink old paper. And I'm just gonna lightly brush it on on my paper. So we're highlighting our wrinkles. And yeah, you can see I, I tore this. I'm not that bothered by it because again, I'm not turning this into any kind of like cover. I'm gonna attach it probably to some cardstock to make it a little firmer. And then, um, die cut it. So um, let's try a little frayed bird oxide ink. And I'm also going to do a little spritz and get it, the ink to move a little bit. vintage photo and that's distress ink lightly brushing it because you want to leave some variation so that you have the hills and the valleys and all that good stuff. Um, let's see, what ink do I want to add next? Really kind of want to come in and add some aged mahogany because I feel like that's, like I like that deep reddish colored leather. So we're going to do that and I'm going to spritz again get some movement of the ink. So we're going to add a little bit more water. Actually, I'm going to use this one, which gets a little finer mist. kind of wanted to get the aged mahogany kind of moving around. And I'm actually going to bring in my heat tool at this point. And I think it needs a little bit more uh, dark brown going in here. So I'm going to grab... My walnut stain and come through and add a little bit of that in a few spots. This spot needs darkening. All right, our final step for this process is going to be adding a coat of, I'm going to use Liquitex matte gel or matte medium over top. You can use Mod Podge, um, gloss medium, whatever you want to use medium wise is fine. And I just need to find a palette to put that on since all of my palettes have got stuff on it. 
I'm going to just use some uh, plastic packaging I have lying around and put the medium on that and grab a paintbrush and apply a coat over top. And again, because I'm, I use distress inks, um, there'll probably be some ink movement while I'm doing this. Because I'm adding a liquid medium on top and that will cause the uh, distress inks to move again. So I'm probably going to speed this up so that you're not sitting here forever watching me just apply a coat of gel medium or matte medium on top. But yeah, I'm going to apply this all over. Alright, I'm going to set this guy aside to dry, and I'm going to pull over this piece, and just going to do pretty much the same thing. Um, might try some different colors on this one, although I do, oh, you know what, let's try a little rusty hinge, see what that gets us. Alright, and I am going to spritz so this is a little damp and the ink will move. And then I'm going to come in while it's still damp, it's not an issue, and pull in some aged mahogany. Hmm, huh. my ground espresso seems to have disappeared. It. Yeah, this one I'm going a bit darker than the other one. And then again, just apply um, a coat of my matte medium. So I'm going to just go in and do that and set this aside to dry and then I'll come back and show you the results. Okay, so our faux leather paper is dry, um, and I really like how it looks. I am going to attach it to some scrap cardstock, probably, and die cut it. Um, so I'm going to set that aside for a little bit. And then our embossed uh, papers, I think, are mostly dry. And I did go ahead and with the paper that I um, added lotion to first and I then went ahead and ran it through with the embossing folder. I think that's probably the better way to do it. Um, cause yeah, you definitely lose some of the embossing adding the lotion afterwards, but it's still really cool. I really like how these came out and I'm gonna be doing some die cutting from those as well. And I'll show you at the end what I die cut. Okay. So I have gone ahead and finished painting all of my faux rusty gears. And just as a recap, I did this one on screen using the Degoart Fluid Acrylics. Um, this is the one using the regular acrylic paints. And this was the one using the Distress paints. Um, this guy was the one with the Crypt paste for um, the texture on it instead of the natural sand as is this one and then 
these are the ones where it's the gesso mixed with the natural sand and I definitely think I should have put more natural sand in with the gesso there's not as much texture on this one as say this guy or the ones with the grit paste um I definitely like the texture I got with the grit paste I'm definitely gonna have to remember to use that again when doing rusty bits and then here are the clock pieces so I did those I did everything off screen with the deco art fluid acrylic because I just I like that effect best for doing with the rust and so here's a bunch of more gears for you and I'm hoping my pulling this up is actually bringing it into focus um I can't actually see what's on the screen of my phone unless I stand up so there's our faux rust and for our faux leather we've got I went ahead off screen and attached uh the pieces that I did to just some random cardstock I had and did go ahead and punch and die cut out some pieces from that so this is a whale tab I figured that would look really cool with like a eyelet through it and something dangling off um, and then these are an Elizabeth craft uh, die it's hardware hinges um, so they've got a score mark in them so that you can do like a hinge on a tag or over the side of a page or however you want to use it or you can use them like this and I did the same with the embossing folder pieces I went ahead and did some die cutting out of that and I really like how the embossing folder turns out like I think this really looks like faux leather leather um, I think a little bit more so than this now the tutorials I had watched using this faux leather technique all used like Mod Podge or a glossy medium for the top coat so maybe if I got them a little glossier um, I'd like it better instead of using the matte so I may try putting a coat of I have a gloss medium as well by Liquitex so I may try doing that and seeing if I like it better but as of right now my my preferred faux leather is the technique using the embossing folder I really like how that came out and these are the pieces this is the one I embossed after adding the hand cream um, and I think it definitely is a does a little bit better than doing the hand cream after the embossing um, so I will keep that in mind for future use but there we go so we've got our faux rust and our faux leather pieces um, that are going to be great for the steampunk journal I plan on working on so that's all for today if you enjoyed this video please do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed the video like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.